All right, let's do it. Let's answer your questions. Uh, Amy, video question first for you. Hey, Halftime Gang. Chris and Lady from London here. We both love Chewy, but are afraid the reopening trade and any further rise in interest rates will hinder the stock price. Thoughts on Chewy over the short run. Thanks. All right, Amy. Beautiful dog, but um, we don't like Chewy here. Um, $30 billion market cap company. It ran up a lot last year, got a pandemic boost. Um, growth is not that robust. Um, bearish entry, not that great. So we're, we're sellers. Okay. Uh, Joe T, video for you. Hi, guys. Uh, my question is about Cleveland Cliffs. Uh, we've had a great run. Uh, we've had a bit of a pullback. Uh, do we buy back in now or do we wait for 1718? Thanks a lot. I feel like Farmer Jim should really have gotten this question, right, Joe? I mean, you I, admit that, right? But, but you take it. You take un, it. Un, unless you suspect that fa Farmer Jim is part of the submission of that question, which potentially he could be. So well, I'm not going to go true. against Farmer Jim. This is true. I'm not, I'm not going against Farmer Jim. Uh, automotive demand for steel has remained resilient despite uh, a lot of the, the chip shortages that are uh, now uh, hindering the automakers. So, yes, I think you could step in with it trading right now at $19 and buy it. But I will say Freeport McMoran, copper exposure, much better material play. Someone might own Freeport McMoran. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's watch the video, Jenny. Hey, Jenny, my name is Tim Olson. I'm from Mandeville, Louisiana. Uh, I have a question about Unum. I'm in at $18 a share is my average cost. It just hit over 30 today. As an income investor, would you be adding to that position or are you looking elsewhere for income? Thank you. All right, what do you think? I think as an income investor, you can still add to this. It has a 3.8% dividend yield. It trades at six times earnings, but the best part is those earnings are gonna grow at about 10% between 2021 and 2022 and they benefit from people returning to work and from a robust um, unemployment environment, as well as increasing interest rates. So you've got a lot going for it. I'd still own it. Okay. Steve Weiss, lastly to you, video question. Let's watch and then you can react. Hello, Scott and team. I'm Merrill from St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. A Kramer recently suggested to sell Jumia. I wonder what Steve Weiss is doing with his position. I'm eager to hear his words of wisdom. Thank you very much. Well, I mean, words of wisdom, my goodness. See, how much you pay this guy to send that in? <laughs> well, first of all, can you play that again? <laughs> uh, look, here, here are my words of wisdom, I understand. Wisdom, it's the only Scott. time you ever hear it, you so you want to hear it 20 times. Please, <laughs> you, you, go ahead. Well, I think you, sh I think you, should, be, you should be writing this down, and, and Jenny, you too. Go ahead. So here's what I'd say. I don't know what Jim knows about Jumia. I spoke to CEO last week. I talked to him regularly. They had a great quarter. But it's not alone in being down as a stock that's not earning anything, although they are profitable on an EBITDA basis, pre-EBITDA basis. But, but it's, not, it's not earning anything. So it's, it's down like the others. So what I've done is I size those stocks to what the market's telling me. But I still do have a position that I still like it. I actually added back to it yesterday. 